We grow up in cultures with narratives that tell us who we are by ways of simplification. And this is happening everywhere. So I am being told that if you are coming from a Muslim geography, you are a Muslim and you can be nothing else, or this has to be your primary identity. Um, if, you, if, you, if you go elsewhere, you, know, you, will, you will come across the same narrative across Europe from the far right. You, if you are a Christian or if you are a Dutch, just be that you know, and nothing else. All extremist ideologies, what they have in common is they simplify complexity. Yeah? And they're based on identity politics. And all identity politics is based on exclusion. That's why I have a huge problem with all kinds of organized religions, because they're based on a distinction between us versus them. And th this, the, the, um, the presumption that us is better than them, you know, sometimes expressed, sometimes not expressed. So I do agree that we intellectuals or, or, or the left, the liberals, have not done a very good job in terms of connecting with people's anxieties, and we must be critical of that. But at the same time, we have to see, we have to resist this tendency to simplify things. Because as human beings, we are so complex. We are composed of multiple selves. You know, we're made of water. Our main element is water. Yeah, it's based on flow. What do I mean is, uh, yes, I'm an Istanbulite. I'm at the same time a Londoner. I have connections to the Balkans. I have connections to the Middle East. There is in me so many elements from the Middle East, you know? At the same time, I'm a European by choice. At the same time, I'm a world citizen. At the same time, I'm a global soul. So if I can have multiple, multiple belongings, there's a bigger chance that my multiple belongings will converge with yours. But if I am based, uh, defined on the basis of a single exclusivist identity politics, there's no way we can find common ground. We need to abolish that narrative that tells us you can only be one thing. You can only you know, simplify the, the, the narrative. And for that, we need intellectuals. We need, need to, to go back to humanism. We need to go back to the basics, but revolutionize it, radicalize it. We mm. can have a more radical humanism. And I know I spoke, you know, I, I'm taking your time, but if I may add this, we need to also talk about certain subjects that we have abandoned for too long, and faith is one of them. I think faith is a subject that's too important to abandon to the religious. You know, and faith is not necessarily a religious concept. When you start writing a book, it's an act of faith. When you fall in love, it's an act of faith. When you move to a new city, it's an act of faith. There are so many moments in our lives that are acts of faith that have nothing to do with religion. And we also need doubt, because faith without doubt will turn into dogma. So we need the vaults, we need the dance, the dialectics of faith and doubt. These are also issues that we don't talk about. And if we don't talk about these things, people go to the far right, people go to the religious, because there is a need to talk about these issues. We are being pulled in two very opposite directions. And the second trend is gaining speed right now. Yes, on the one hand, we, we had high hopes you know, about world citizens, global souls, internationalism, multiculturalism, which is not a favorable word anymore. And then the other one, the tribalism, isolationism, the illusion that sameness will bring safety. This is what we are being spoon-fed right now. They're telling us if you are being surrounded by people who are exactly like you, who dress up like you, who speak like you, who come from the same background, you'll be safe. It's an illusion. We are far too globalized to have this. Whether we have walls, actual physical walls or not, sameness will not bring us safety.